my next guest here, he's a professional mixed martial artist with a record of 19 wins with eight losses. This man is an A's fan. He is a Raiders fan. He is a badass mixed martial artist. He's got some ba badass haircut. You can catch him on Tuesday nights, folks, under the Ultimate Fighter Season 31. He's coming off a hellacious win over Mondo Gutierrez. Ladies and gentlemen, Ooh. Cody Gibson. How you doing, Cody? Doing good, man. Just wrapping up the day. Awesome, brother. So you, you're in Cali, right? Yes, sir. Awesome, man. Well, thank you for taking the time to, to talk with us here, man. Uh, we, we've been talking about the show. Excited to have you on, man. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. I always so, like talking to people about uh, this bike. <laughs> absolutely, man. How, so how's life been for you, man? Because I guess uh, we weren't expecting your fight to happen when it happened uh, last night with it air, man. Did you have any idea that that was going to happen or did they just keep you in the dark with everything? No, they they told they told me in advance because I had, I had like interviews lined up and stuff for the, like the t the after show and stuff like that, um, and we get the recording of the fights the day we get them on Monday Monday, okay. they send us like a private recording so we could watch it before it airs. Oh, okay, sweet. Uh, so that's cool. Me and my wife always watch it on Monday night, you know. Um, and I'm you. It actually works out better for my schedule because I'm in the gym the time it airs on Tuesdays, so I never am home to watch it you know, like live or anything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it works out. Do you, uh, do you get a lot of, how's life been for you since uh, coming back from filming the show? Uh, just back to normal life, man. Just, uh, I'm a T I'm a high or I used to be a high school. Now I'm a middle school teacher. So, uh, <laughs> we, 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 we uh, wrap up, uh, the school year this Friday. So I'm, uh, I'm ready to get the hell out of there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Jonah, you have a question for Cody? Yeah, man, dude. Okay, so so being a teacher, as you can see, my cat just jump on my on my on my headboard there. Um, what uh, what subjects do you teach, man? That's awesome. Uh, I taught history, uh, AP U.S. history and economics. Oh, dude, that's awesome! Like eight years, and then um, I was. Yeah, that's a that's what I went to school for, and history is kind of my wheelhouse. And um, this, I was commuting about forty five minutes uh, from where I live to where I worked. And so I was kind of just tired of doing that. And so a job this last summer uh, popped up uh, just locally, just down the road for me, um, teaching middle school PE. Uh-oh. And so it's been a, a transition to work that it, uh, not having a, that hour and a half of commuting a day saves me that time, you know? Yeah. More time to be That's in the also, gym. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jonah, your your next question. Oh man, dude. Okay, so obviously, I mean, the the fight. I mean, it played out good. I'm talking about your fight uh, out on tough, of course. Um, how like w when you landed it? Did you expect? I mean, it looked like it was flush, like it was a nice clean, like nothing follow up was needed. But he like did not go out. Were you shocked at like when when you hit it that he didn't just go out? Like it looked like it landed so clean. I was shocked he even stayed in it. Yeah, it's, you never know, you know. Sometimes you land a shot, and you think like, "Oh, that was a shot," and like they don't even react. <laughs> and other times, yeah. like <laughs> something that feels like, you know, wasn't even like full power, and it knocks a guy down or knocks him out. So it's kind of, yeah, I don't know. People are making fun of my hammer fist at the end, but I mean, that's, <laughs> you just go ape shit. You know, you're like, Dude. hey, you see an opening to finish the fight, you're just like, whatever it takes, man. Yeah, man, you got to get the guy out of there, man. You got to punch your ticket. <laughs> Yes, sir. So yeah, I wasn't. I mean, it was, yeah. What's funny is that that I throw that strike all the time in training, um, and I've thrown it a couple times in in fights. I fought John Dotson a couple years ago, and I threw a flying knee on him, a running flying knee, and I didn't land it flush. I landed like on his collarbone, but uh, I've thrown it before. One of my my old training partners from years and years ago. After he saw the show last night, he sent me a video from like literally ten years ago, and we're like drilling stand up together, and I like throw that switch flying knee, and I was like, "Shit, I guess I've been working on that one for a while." <laughs> How crazy did your adrenaline pump, man, when you hit that knee? Oh man, it was like it all happened so fast, you know. <clears throat> That's the way it goes sometimes, but uh, I'm glad I ended it when I did because I. I banged up my knee pretty bad as you're going to see here in the next couple episodes um uh, in the fight and uh yeah so i'm glad uh, i got out of there 
before uh, the pain started to really set in. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Now, uh, so what was it like, man? I mean, you, you fought at the Apex. You fought in front of Connor, Dana, Michael Chandler, right? Some some big names there. I mean, w did it feel anything different than just any other other fights? I mean, you, you've been in a lot of them. Did it feel any different for you? I mean, it did and it didn't. It did in the sense that, you know, I got cut from the UFC eight, eight years ago. And so most of the guys on the show, even, you know, all the veterans that were there, most of them had been in the UFC within the last like year to two years. Um, and so I was the one who was like, oh, yeah, back in 2014, 15, <laughs> like, um, and I've just been grinding on the regional scene for eight, eight years since, you know, I've fought like I may have been in an LFA. I fought for that Eagle FC when Khabib came to America yeah. for a bit. Uh, ex MMA over on the on um, that's where I fought one of my Miami fights in South Carolina, uh, so just different promotions. But it's just been sometimes hard to find fights. Sometimes I've had injuries and surgeries in that eight year time, and COVID happened in that time. So I mean, yeah, time flies, man. So uh, it was it was nerve wracking. I remember, you know, one of the things that was interesting about the show was, um, and I'm not a big Conor McGregor fan. Me and him didn't really see eye to eye most of the show. Mm -hmm. Um, but one of the things he said in, in the, in the episode last night, Mondo was asking him after a training session, um, you know, what do you feel in the back? What do you do in the back? You know, that sort of question. And, um, he said something that I thought was really interesting. He said, he kind of, you could tell that he was having trouble answering the question because the reality is that every fight's different. Sometimes you feel, you feel really calm and collected and almost too calm where you're like, why am I so calm? Uh, and then other times you're like overly nervous. Uh, and, and he said that you, whatever the emotion is that you have in the back, just let it be and not overanalyze it and just let the, it, it's a, that's supposed to be the emotion you're having. Cause that's the emotion you are having, you know? So I thought that was kind of profound because sometimes I feel like you're in the back and I've had instances where I, I was almost overly calm and I was yeah. like, why am I not more nervous? Well, I got to rev myself up and get ready. I'm about to fight. You know, I can't be like, dipping on a my tie here it's, it's time to fight and uh, uh and other times you know i've i've been really nervous and this time in particular maybe just because of the grab you know the the gravity of the situation and how much eight years of trying to get back and finally i got my shot back and i've got to make it count and so uh, i was really nervous i had a really tough weight cut um um so yeah it was a lot of a lot of nerves just kind of rushing through you there a lot of emotion so um, definitely started to settle in place. Franklin. Sorry, my dog's going crazy at the UPS, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, just a lot of, a lot of emotions just kind of overflowing, overflow, overflowing there for, uh, during the fight, before the fight, during the fight, and then immediately after. So, uh, but I started settling in after that first fight a little bit better. Did you, uh, so you weren't a Connor fan before, or was it after the show that, uh, you're not so much of a huge Connor fan? I mean, I'm a fan of his as far as, like, what he's done for the sport, um, the eyeballs he's brought to it, the accomplishments he's had. I remember when he was coming up, I used to be managed by the same guy he's managed by, Audi Attar from Paradigm Sports Management. Um, and so I actually fought on the same card with Connor at UFC 170 when he fought Poirier for the first time, and he was just coming up. You know, he wasn't the, Conor, the notorious Connor McGregor that we know of now. And that was really the first – big fight he had in Vegas at a pay-per-view and he, he was on the main card and that whole place, I believe it was at Mandalay Bay and that entire, it felt like all of Las Vegas was just stormed with Irish people chanting in mobs up and down the streets and the casinos. And that was when I was, I remember really sitting back like this guy is not like us. Like he's something different about this guy. And, um, and obviously, he went on to have the career that he's had. Um, but just as a man and a person, I'm not a big fan of his. Uh, as a fighter, I, you know, I respect him. I've always tried to emulate his yeah. skills in the gym. How does he move? What are things I can pick up from him? Things like that, of course, you've got to respect him. But just not as a man or a, or a you know, a, per, a, yeah, a man, I guess. It, it feels like a lot of people are trying to soak in being in his presence there on the house whether it's, it's on the show of course you know connor's a big figure am i right by saying that because it, it just feels like obviously everyone's just trying to gravitate and, and i guess whether it's trying to soak up his knowledge you know in that capacity was there is there truth to that 
Yeah, I mean, I think everybody in the house knew that you know he's a special fighter, and um, if they could take something from him, and he's and he said things before that have stuck with me that you know, yeah. um, I remember after his first fight with uh, Nate Diaz when he got upset, uh, they they were inter uh, Megan Olive, uh, what's her name, Megan Olivia, Olivia, Olivia. Or whatever her name is, Olivia, yeah. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Uh, she was like walking with him right after the fight, interviewing him. And he said something about, you know, energy systems and how he didn't manage his energy systems. And like that stuck with me because sometimes I've gone into fights and been in such phenomenal shape. But if I don't manage my energy systems in the fight, then it doesn't matter how good your sh uh, shape you came in. Yeah. Um, and so things like that, there's things that have stuck with me. So I, I think you're right. I think a lot of the fighters or most of the fighters in the house, you know, tried to gain something from them in conversation at least. Um, we just, uh, we didn't, we never really saw eye in the house. We had a, a couple of altercations and, uh, yeah, I, I tried to stay away from him more or less. Jonah, and your question. Oh, was that? Go ahead. Sorry. No, Jonah, you have a question for Cody? Oh yeah, man. I just, so, I mean, we talked about Connor, you know, and, and what it's like to be around him, but Michael Chandler, I mean, you, you said in the show tonight, uh, or excuse me, yesterday when it aired, um, the, the confidence that he instills it's kind of a joke, like with the MMA community, like, you know, confident Michael Chandler, inspirational Michael Chandler. Is he like just like that in person, like always being like thoughtful and motivational and inspiring to like your to the team? Yeah, and I know it comes off. I know it's kind of a joke in the MMA Twitter community kind of mm. world that like some of it can get corny, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, which I don't, you know, I'm sure some of it does. But yeah. I mean, he really is like he is a motivational guy. Like when you meet him and talk to him and like just, and really just watch how he conducts himself and how deliberate he is and how much he just puts all of himself into anything he's doing. Um, and he gives his full effort in every avenue of his life. Um, I don't know, man, it's something special about him. And I just tried to, you know, we just kind of clicked and bonded a lot. I think we both came from that wrestling background and his, his brand is called walk on. And the story behind that is he was a walk-on wrestler in Mizzou. And so um, that mentality of like that walk-on mentality, is it's kind of right up my alley. I've always kind of been, thought of myself as an underdog in life and fighting and everything. So, um, yeah, I took a lot from him. And he did help me, you know, especially when you're really nervous. You're like, holy crap, man, All eight years I'm trying to get back here. And I got to perform, you know, this one, this one instance, two rounds against a tough dude. And um, – yeah, man, it, I was I was really I didn't really care which side I landed on, which coach I got when I got in Vegas. Uh, but in retrospect, I'm I'm really happy where I landed. Yeah, and then and then when you when you get a win on tough, like um, you like you kind of said the other day uh, or when the episode aired, you didn't really expect to feel like a, a a team, like like you didn't really expect to bond like with like feel like you're one with a team when you win, did it? Did it really after your win feel like, all right, I did it for my team? Or did it still feel like individual, like, all right, I'm the man. Like, I did it. I punched my ticket to the next. Or was it a happy balance of, you know, both? I think there there, there was a happy balance between both. Like I said on the show, like, I really didn't think – like, I would watch yeah. the seasons of The Ultimate Fighter and you would see the guys in the bleachers or on the little stage in the fights um, cheering their guys on. And then I always thought it was goofy, like, yeah. you've known this dude for like two weeks like why are you cheering him on like you, the team aspect of this whole thing matters but i think it's similar to like obviously i'm not going to compare it to it but like a, a like the military or, or a team like a wrestling team or any team if you go through the trenches with someone if you go through an experience with a group um there's a bonding that occurs very quickly and we were all kind of that whole experience was not only physically the challenging and obviously the fighting and all that stuff, but uh, mentally, they, it, I mean, they cooped us up in a hotel for two weeks before we got on the show yeah. and we were stuck in our rooms without a key. I mean, <laughs> by yourself in a little dinky hotel room. And it was like, are they trying to like mess with our minds right now? <laughs> like, you know I mean? like, D dinky, no, no, uh, no sweets, man, or anything. <laughs> No, they weren't dinky. They were fine. You know, they were right by the airport and they were like standard, you know, hotel rooms and everything. And they had a little gym we got to go to twice a day. <laughs> uh, that oh was literally God. the only thing we got to do is work out twice a day by ourselves. Like I went on a run. I literally probably put in 70 miles, 80 miles in those two weeks. Cause what else am I going to do? Like you could only freaking 
you know, pump the little bit of dumbbells they had in the gym, you know, so much before you're like, I got to do something else. So I was, I was running. A lot of us were running. I was like Steve Prefontaine out there, man. Cody, I got to ask, man, I mean, li living in the house, man, and uh, I've asked this to previous people on there, where you don't have to say names, habits, or any of that stuff, man, but living with people, man, I think it, I living with strangers, man, I, I'd, I'd go crazy, man, just because I'm such a, I can be such a, like, neat freak and stuff, I, I, I like things in my house put a certain way, any of that shit drive you crazy, man? It did, the young guys, the guys without kids and families, yeah, and, like, um they didn't clean after themselves very well and okay. i mean that you got 16 guys in the i mean even though it was a big like you know crib style house like it just got like i that's what i thought was funny about the first episode when they showed the house and it looked like an episode of cribs you know how they're yeah. showing like room from room and it looked like just such a badass house and it was all those amenities were there and all that stuff but from my how i remember it it's, i just remember it being so grimy you know, like all the times is dirty, um, you know, just so much. And everybody cooked because they gave us whatever we wanted food wise from the grocery store. So guys were just always and there's nothing else to do, I think, too. Yeah. So guys are just cooking all the time and uh, not cleaning up after themselves. So, yeah, man, uh, you'll see as the season goes on. I, I was the guy who was like most on the young guys about that. <laughs> and I I anticipate I, I didn't get too like pushed out of shape about it because i kind of anticipated it yeah. like i you know so i kind of was bracing myself for the experience and that part of it so i didn't like get too pushed out of shape but it was definitely annoying you know for sure <laughs> did did uh you know because you know you're, you're married you know you got kids and stuff was there anything maybe your wife told you before you went over there because obviously living Living with your wife and your family is different than living with a bunch of strangers out there. Was there any advice, you know, shout out to your wife, but is there, was there anything that she told you that kind of just kept you calm while you were over there? I mean, I think that, well, she, she told me, don't, don't embarrass yourself. Don't oh, embarrass enough. me. Great advice. Good, don't, advice. Don't, Good advice. Don't go, uh, don't go drinking all that proper 12 and make a fool <laughs> of yourself, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm more, she, I mean, I mean, I, 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 you know, had a lot of roommates throughout college and yeah. I was a couch surfer, man, in, in college and always just moving about and five, six guys to a small apartment and stuff like that. So I've kind of got used to that kind of lifestyle. So I kind of knew what the experience was going to be like in that way. Uh, but it's definitely a shock when you, you know, you, I guess some things just become natural, like picking up after yourself over the years, yeah. you just start, you just like instinctually do it. Whereas as those guys, I don't know, maybe they still got mom to pick up after him. I don't know. Shit, I hear that. Now, uh, you're also a A's fan. You're a Raiders fan, man. Where's where's your love for other sports come from, man? Uh, I mean, just experiences. You know, I think most like most people, like you think about the times in your life, you got to go to A's games or, you know, you got to go to Raiders games. Um, and we actually had a triple A ball, ball team in my, in my hometown that was uh, the feeder team to the Oakland A's. At the time, when I was growing up, so some of those players that I, I remember getting autographs from, you know, and stuff on on baseballs, and then like Eric Chavez that comes to mind, like he ended up being a, a really good major leaguer. I think he was a, either a first baseman or a third baseman. Um, but yeah, I mean, those types of things, you know. Uh, and I don't follow sports as much as I probably would if I had more time on my hands. I usually, I'm like a playoff sports fan. Like I kind of follow it throughout the season. I never catch games and the playoffs hit and I'll, I'll, I'll look at when the games are and I'll sit down and watch at least some of them, you know. So um, football, I'm, you know, fantasy football changed everything, man. I'm freaking, I'm all about that life. <laughs> telling you, man, I, I won last year, man. I won last year. Unfortunately, right. you know. I won in a technicality. Unfortunately, you know, I'm so happy that Demar Hamlin is, is well and stuff. Obviously, when that game was scrapped, I was in the lead. So we just cut <laughs> oh. it. Yeah, we just cut it. I was in the lead. And the other guy, I was up by like 20 points. And the other guy had Jamar Chase with, you know, Jamar Chase, you just never know, right? He can go off. So I got, I was very, um, mm. let's just say the cards went in my favor that day. Bittersweet. A little yeah, bittersweet. very bittersweet. I'm, I'm glad the guy's doing well. But yeah. fantasy, fantasy football, man, you got any favorite players? Ooh, man, I've had some good ones over the years. I like doing combinations. So whoever my top wide receiver is, I want to have the quarterback they have. So I'm kind of – I don't know why I like to do it that way. Um, I'm always a little weary of running backs just because I feel like they get hurt so much. 
I agree. You know, like there, it's a little to me. I don't know what the statistics show, but like obviously you want good running backs, but I won't waste my early draft picks on backs just because. How many guy times have we like top picks get end up you know can't blowing out their knee in week two and then they just Taylor? wasted that pick. So, um, yeah, it's happened, man. And let's. I freaking lost. I think it was <clears throat> last year <clears throat> because uh, they benched Josh Allen when the team was up so much. Yeah, and he was my quarterback, and I needed like one more point, and it was like, yeah, I ended up losing because of that. So. I remember being really Ooh. pissed about that one. <laughs> yeah, man. The coaches don't give a shit about fantasy football, unfortunately. <laughs> Cody, as as we're nearing the end no. here, man, here in the review, I'm I'm doing this thing. We're doing some trivia here, man. We're doing some Ultimate Fighter trivia. You may be great at this. You may be bad at this. I'm going to ask you three questions here, man. You get two out of three right, man. We'll do a special a special prize for, for some of our viewers out there, man. So no pressure. All right. Oh, I'm pretty. I'm pretty. I'm, I'm not gonna toot my own horn if I screw this up. So, well, let's it's, hear him. it's it's Ultimate Fighter. So Ultimate Fighter stuff. So, let's see here. What fighter was the first person to ever get kicked off the show after the show was over? Oh, after the show was over. Yep. Jesse after the Taylor. show was over. Yes, sir. Pay the man. One right. Ooh. Jesse Taylor, uh, yes, he was the dude who did the limo thing, right? Yep. Yes, sir. You are correct. That was season seven under uh, Team Forest. It was the Forest and Rampage, the Rampage one. Sweet. We're already off to a great start here. All right. Question two here. Which fighter was the first person to win the Ultimate Fighter and become a world champion in the UFC? Uh, all right. Win the well, we ultimate fighter and become the first one to become a UFC champion. I got two in my head. Okay. Because, I mean, obviously, Forrest was the first ultimate fighter, and he did become a world champion. But Rashad was either the same season and the other weight class or the next season, and he became a world champion. I'm just trying to think of who became a world champion first. Think about it long and hard on that one. Forrest, who did he beat to win a world title? He kind of was in the right place at the right time, I felt like. Oh, um, I like Forrest. I thought he won. <laughs> I like Forrest. I like <laughs> Forrest. I, I'm going to – I'll go with Forrest Griffin. Uh, that is unfortunately incorrect. It was Matt Serra. Matt Serra won season four of the Ultimate oh. Fighter and beat uh, GSP. Oh. Biggest upset. I think one of the biggest upsets in UFC history. I guess that makes sense because it would have taken – Forrest or Rashad a few years in the UFC, you know, so, before they. So, so Forrest won uh, the world championship after coaching season seven of the ultimate fighter against rampage. And so, what about Rashad? Was he after them too? Rashad actually beat Forrest to become champion. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I, I was a little nice. salty on that one. Uh, speak, <laughs> speaking of Rashad. So Rashad Evans won season two of The Ultimate Fighter. This is the third and last question. So Rashad Evans won season two of The Ultimate Fighter. Under which weight class did he win the show? A, heavyweight. heavyweight. Oh, heavyweight. <laughs> all right, man. All right. All right. He wins. He wins. He wins. All right. You got two out of three. Two out of three, man. And j just for that, man, we're going to give uh, a good old, uh, I'd say a total wine and more. I don't know if I can ship out a bottle of proper 12 to, to a <laughs> listener out here, but uh We'll, we'll hook him up with a bottle. You got to be at least 21 years old. We'll be posting this on our Instagram on there, and we'll raffle out a bottle. Thanks to Cody Gibson. Cody, awesome, man. It was a hell of a time being able to chat with you, my, my brother here. Uh, is there anything you want to let the audience know before we sign off? Oh, man, I just appreciate everybody watching. You know, um, last time I was in the UFC, it was like 2014, 15, and like social media wasn't what it is today. Like everybody just like had Facebook and talked to their grandmas. Yeah. And uh, and now it is obviously blown up like it has. And so uh, it's been a little bit overwhelming for me because I'm not big, like I'm not too good at it and like trying to figure it out and like that sort of stuff. And and I'm just the kind of person who likes to respond to people when they say, when they take the time out of their day to message you, you know? Um, so it's been, it's been an interesting last 24 hours, but uh, <laughs> I just appreciate it. You know, I appreciate everybody watching, supporting. Uh, without the fans, you know, we wouldn't make any money. Um, so, uh, yeah, shout out to uh, all the fans out there.
Awesome. Cody Gibson, ladies and gentlemen, you can catch him on season 31 of the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, he's moving on to the semifinals after a great win. Highlight real finish for sure. Cody, thank you for your time, brother. <laughs> he froze the last second. I think I think he did. <laughs> Gotta love him though. Hey, it's all right. It was great. Awesome. So I think we might have lost Cody there, but Cody Gibson, great guy, great conversation, man. We enjoyed it. He won a bottle, or uh, I'm not sure. Can I can I ship out liquor, Jonah? Oh yeah, probably yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. That's yeah. that's a thing. Sending I was really wand. hoping he was gonna get that third one wrong. <laughs> now you go. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> there you go. I was really hoping he was gonna get that third one wrong there, and, and he fucking got it. I was gonna, I was even gonna make that shit multiple choice there for him, and he fucking got it on the first yeah. one. You gotta make the questions harder, man. These guys are tough. Did you know? Did you know the answers to any of these? I knew. I knew it was Matt Sarah, big Matt Sarah guy. Uh, big well, Matt well, Sarah. well, you also do tend to 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 post and shit on GSP sometimes. There when I, I, I <laughs> no, I mean I like GSP. No, I knew the Matt Sarah one. I didn't know the other ones though, I, because my man, my my MMA knowledge is pretty short, man. I became a hardcore only like four or five years ago, so still, so, still. So uh, you didn't know the Jesse Taylor one. No, I I remember I like I know about it, but I didn't I I didn't like click in my brain. So like, the Rashad Evans, you probably would have said light heavyweight. Yeah, I probably I well, I I was thinking middleweight because that's where he finished. So yeah. in my head, I was like, oh, maybe that's where he started. I don't know. I know he fought at light heavyweight, and then I know he fought at the the three different. So ones. he won heavyweight. I think he, he I doubt he fought in a, again. So he won the show at heavyweight, and then and he that was went to, to light heavyweight and uh, I gotcha. did pretty damn good at it. Yeah. <laughs> so Cody Gibson got got when this episode drops, man, we'll definitely cut cut the little trivia thing out. We'll post yeah. it on there. If you're hearing it here, thanks for tuning in, folks. We'll put it on the pot on the on the IG page at Critical Condition Sports. We'll send out a bottle. If whether we can't if we can't send out a bottle, we'll send you a fucking gift card. Regardless, <laughs> that was Cody Gibson, Jonah Rawls, man. It's been a been a hell of a time. And to anyone out there listening, I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye. <laughs>